look at that sh Like, look at how we store our nuclear. How's that not safe? Like, how could you think that would not be safe? So, uh, let's see this. Dear viewer, you've been conditioned. You've been tricked by years of television shows, movies, and video games into thinking that nuclear waste looks like this. Yellow barrels of bubbling, glowing green goo just ready to be toxic and transformative and spill into some nearby river and make giant insects and stuff. <gasps> but like how commercials think that people actually sit in jackets and jeans in their own home, this depiction of nuclear waste couldn't be further from the truth. The reality of the situation is one of entirely plausible and safe management, nearly indestructible storage and solutions that we've known about for literally decades. Today, let's see if we can't set the record straight, shall we? Please. Kevin, clean up all this goo. I don't know what it is. Wear some gloves. Now entering the facility. According to basically any poll you'd like to look at on the subject, most people view nuclear waste and its disposal as a fundamental obstacle for the expansion of nuclear power. I hear this very often. I watched a video by a professor on this very topic a few years ago, which actually put my mind at ease because it was actually one of my biggest fears with nuclear was exactly that. My, my fear years ago was exactly that, that what about all the waste? What about the downsides? What about all the bullshit? So I was just as scared as everyone else. And then I watched a video about a nuclear, uh, a nuclear physicist that actually explained that, well, uh, if you put all of the world's nuclear waste together, it, it basically fills up an entire room of, I think, 12 by 12 or some shit like that. That's how much nuclear waste we have already uh, as a world. And that nuclear waste is entirely safe. Like, there's, it can, nothing can happen to it. It can't do anything. Power. Many of you may imagine a disaster like Chernobyl, which is now unfortunately ongoing, when I mention nuclear waste. But this is the image in your head that I want to challenge on today's program. It is my contention that nuclear waste is nowhere near the problem you think it is. And this misconception is leading to both improper management of nuclear waste and it's inhibiting the expansion of nuclear power, which you, of course you know I'm for. So just yeah. so you don't think I'm in the pocket of big uranium here, today I will start from the ground up point A to point B, give you all the facts and eventually lead you through my reason. Is there even such a thing as big uranium? We have nuclear power plants here in the States, have not had a meltdown. The security in them is insane. The policies and procedures are extremely in-depth. I had a pipe fitter friend that worked in one and he went over how they work and what it takes to work in one. It's insane. Oh yeah, they, they take great precautions with that chat. If at the end of today's episode you don't agree with me, that's fine. At least I think you have all the facts, which I ran by industry professionals before filming this video. So we begin. Okay. What is nuclear waste? Nuclear yeah. waste, or radioactive waste more generally, is any waste that emits alpha, beta, or gamma radiation. It can be anything from spent nuclear fuel rods down to the gloves that nuclear engineers wear. And it comes from nuclear medicine, nuclear power production, and the reprocessing of nuclear okay. weapons, as well as rare earth mining. Take to date, almost half it. a million tons of nuclear waste has been generated, though a third of that has been recycled. Instead of going- The nice thing about Fukushima is that no one died, big, the big white, from the nuclear thing. So yes, Fukushima was really bad in terms of, you know, the nuclear power plant got hurt. But in terms of deaths, uh, there, there I, I don't think there were any deaths due to the nuclear power plant having its meltdown. Exactly because of these safety procedures that is inside these nuclear power plants. It's actually incredibly difficult to have a nuclear power plant going to complete meltdown. They have so many safety procedures that kick in uh, to stop things like that. Uh, yeah, Homer Simpson going out with uranium barrel. Don't exist. Security is amazing. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Let's go back a little bit here. Rare earth mining. To date, almost half a million tons of nuclear waste has been generated, though a third of that has been recycled. Instead of going to a okay. dump or some large single area, because of public skepticism, nuclear waste is almost always either stored where it is generated on site 
in pools of water or in so-called dry casks above the ground, which we'll get to. Yeah, I called you Big Uranium because it sounded cool. Make the check out to Kyle Hill, H-I-L. Sorry, I was just subscribing to some magazines. Now, with thousands of tons of nuclear right. waste accumulating at sites all around the world, you may expect me now to start listing off all of the known environmental and health effects from nuclear waste. Please and do. That's what makes the public so skeptical, right? Well, I can't. Properly managed nuclear waste has no currently known widespread environmental or public health effects. This isn't uh, barrels and barrels of glowing green goo just yeah. waiting to poison your river. No, this is reconstituted nuclear material in ceramic and glass and encased Dude, in... Dude, look at that shit. Look at that shit. Like, look at how we store our nuclear. How's that not safe? Like, how could you think that would not be safe? Great and steel forever. Sounds like the world is more affected by the waste generated on TikTok. <laughs> That's right, Arya. Does anyone know how to not dance like they're at a theater kid's boring wedding? <laughs> Sheesh! What the world seems to have forgotten about, or is just straight up ignoring, is that the non-nuclear waste we are producing right now, every second, is so, so much worse. It's literally killing us right now. Most of the world uses fossil fuels, right? Yep. Well, let's do the same comparisons that we just you, you want to know something really fucking horrible, right? Uh, there are only thing keeping us from World War III. Uh, I can see that. You want to know the weirdest thing? We knew about solar energy, like how to how to generate solar e energy, before we even discovered oil. So before we figured out how to turn oil into actual energy, we already knew about solar. And then oil was discovered, and the people that had oil also had money, and basically did their lobbying magic and got solar pushed out. Can you imagine if a hundred years ago, we already started investing heavily in solar? How much further along would we have been uh, in terms of solar technology if that was the way to go, if that was the way the world went? So we never went into oil or coal, we just straight up went into solar. It's safe, but not anywhere. Uh, but not anywhere. That's my problem. Not anywhere the security is, as in America. The big white. The nice thing about most nuclear power plants. So South Africa has a nuclear power plant, and my government is one of the most uh, horrendous ones out there. But even our nuclear power plant is um, up to world standards. So the world sends out. Uh, just I think two years ago. We had scientists, uh, an engineering science team from France that visited uh, Kubar, which is our nuclear power plant, um, for almost three months, where they did studies and tests to see exactly how the power plant is doing, is the power plant safe, and they signed off and said, yep, this is 100% fine, everything's being maintained, it's all good. Um, I feel like 90% of the countries in the world takes nuclear power plants seriously. So even some of your worst governments out there, it, maybe apart from North Korea, like North Korea seems like the one place that would probably go, well, as long as the nuclear power plant isn't near Pyongyang, we're good, right? If there's a meltdown and it kills like 5 million people, that's just 5 million less people we need to feed. Um, but maybe every other government in the world would take it at least semi-seriously in how they build their nuclear power plants. Just a few months ago, bombed a nuclear power plant, so, but yet nothing happened, the big white. Because those power plants are incredibly, incredibly difficult to explode. Even with things like, like, they're literally built. This guy has another video, it's a couple of years old at this point, but you guys can go watch it. Uh, he has another video where he speaks about why nuclear is the future. Um, those power plants are built to withstand bombings. They, they're built, the safety mechanisms within them are built to withstand shit like this. Did on this program, how much fossil fuel waste is produced? Well, every year in the US alone, coal plants put more ash into the sky by weight than 300 times all of the nuclear waste ever produced in every single way ever. That happens every year. Do the math, Fuck. and an average coal plant in the US will put more ash 
into the air and the atmosphere every hour than a single nuclear plant will. Dude, that is quite fucking scary. Like, I don't give a fuck about an argument for or against global warming. I, I don't care about that argument. I don't want to get involved in an argument about is global warming real, isn't it real? I don't care. For me, a far more uh, practical argument and a far more uh, successful argument is just simple. Do you prefer clean or dirty air? It's as simple as that. We don't have to worry about is the earth getting warmer by 1.5 degrees, it, are the oceans getting warmer by 1 degree or 1.5 degrees or any bullshit like that. We don't have to worry about that. It's a simple question. Do we think that the ocean is better when it's not being polluted by all sorts of crazy shit? And do we think it's better when air is kind of clean and when you breathe, you're actually breathing in oxygen and, and not like oxygen plus a bunch of fucking coal particles? or like a bunch of carbon shit and, and, and crap. And I think, I want to say 100% of people, but I realize there are some stupid people out there. So let's say 95% of human beings on the planet are going to tell you, yes, clean would be better. And if you agree with me that clean is better, then we cannot keep going with coal. It is as simple as fucking that. If we all agree that clean is better, then coal is not the way to keep going. I'm not saying go immediately off coal, that would be stupid and that would crash the world economy. I'm saying let's move to something that isn't fucking up our atmosphere, that isn't fucking up our air. It's as simple as that. In its entire lifetime, where does all this fossil fuel waste go? Well, look around. The trees, the topsoil, the atmosphere, your lungs, how does it affect people? There is also probably the case to make, and this is getting into a lot more, but CO2 is used by trees, and, and so it's not, we don't want to, like, just, CO2 isn't a bad thing. It's just a bad thing when we produce far more than what nature needs. But CO2 just on the face of it isn't a bad thing, which is also a thing that a lot of people are sort of, ignorant about like a lot of people are just like oh my god we should we should have zero co2 and it's like dude you can never get zero to co2 what the fuck are you talking about zero co2 is a pipe dream unless of course we're going to kill all species and and everything on the planet then we could reach zero co2 but then everything will die because uh well trees kind of need the co2 one in five deaths can be attributed to the burning of inefficient fuels like gasoline and coal. And finally, have there been any large scale health and environmental effects from proper management of fossil fuel? Gates, I'm gonna be honest with you, even large fossil fuel companies want clean. So one of the world's biggest investors in clean energy is, um, I believe it's either Total or Sussel which are oil companies. Uh, they, they produce fuel. Uh, and they're investing like nuts into clean energy. So even the fossil fuel industry have realized that fossil fuels is not the future. Like, we can't keep going with fossil fuels. Uh, they, even they know this. Um, of course, the problem with them is that they want to... It's always going to be tomorrow because today they can still make money out of the fossil fuels, right? So every single time they, uh, <laughs> like they're always just gonna be like, yeah, we'll switch to clean tomorrow, today buy my oil. Uh, Shadows Kallik, thanks so much for doing something. I appreciate that six months in a row. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Fuel waste? Well, yeah. Jesus, dude. This hurts to look at because it's hurting the world. And yet we still maintain this tremendous blind spot for things like this. You remember this happening, right? It's true that radioactivity can be dangerous in a different kind of way, but even here, if you look into the numbers, just by nature, 
of how coal is processed, nice, Shadow. it contains some amount of radioactive material. It comes from the ground just like everything else. And the average coal plant through its ash will put more <laughs> <Old> radiation <laughs> into the atmosphere than a hundred times what a nuclear plant of the same size would. Look, I'm no expert here. I'm no scientist, but I think about radiation a lot. I do my research. I've been to Chernobyl myself. And yeah, I can it's very tell true. you that I'd rather spend a week in Chernobyl, maybe not right now, than say a week in Beijing, when the air quality is literally so bad, it's worse than what the first responders at Ground Zero on 9-11 were breathing. Remember, this isn't worst case versus- Dude, like that is the fucking bonkers thing for me. So the BRICS countries, you guys know what the BRICS are, right? It's my country is part of BRICS. It's Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, the BRICS nations. Uh, they just had their summit and uh, China, Xi Jinping, got up on stage to do the address because China is the host this year for the BRICS nations uh, thing. And China got on stage and they were talking about clean energy and how the world, uh, how we're destroying the planet. And as I was sort of reading like the bullshit that that guy was saying, I just thought to myself, dude, your country is like one of the worst polluters in the world. Like, your cities are literally covered in fucking smog because of all the coal and shit that you burn. And you are telling the rest of the world that they need to switch to clean energy. Like, what the fuck? How about you guys switch to clean energy, and then you can probably worry about what the rest of the world is doing. Adelia, thank you so much for the 18 months in a row. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I will use your money well. I really appreciate that. So considering the fact they deal with that shit air quality daily, not just a few days, consistently on daily, Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. It is bad in China. This is worst case. This is not Chernobyl versus Exxon. This is complicated reality versus complicated reality. And right now, the reality is that fossil fuel is I think the done, invisible brother. scourge that people imagine nuclear waste to be. But administrator, if nuclear waste isn't as bad as fossil fuel pollution and the problem is already solved, what is the solution? Ah, yes, the whole point of this episode. And uh, Arya, get big uranium back on the phone. I could use a new Lamborghini. Magazine subscription. Damn. Nothing I've said so far actually demonstrates right. that nuclear waste isn't dangerous, just that it's less harmful than other forms of waste. So let's talk about how nuclear waste is actually managed. Okay. Out of a nuclear power plant like the one behind me, there are three kinds of waste that can be produced. Low level waste, which can be anything from papers to gloves that are lightly irradiated. Intermediate level waste that does require some shielding but decays well enough over time and high level waste. This is the stuff that Those are the things that we have about. to worry about. Yeah. That needs to be cooled down in cooling ponds for a couple of years before being stored away. Now, even though this is the stuff Fuck. people really worry about, it's only a tiny, tiny fraction of all the nuclear waste produced. In fact, all of the high level Three waste percent? ever Dude, created like what the by Fuck? every nuclear power plant in the world could be buried in just a football field size space. Yeah. Nuclear power is just that efficient. Now, as we said, high-level waste is stored mostly above ground in so-called dry right. casks. Giant concrete cylinders that can weigh as much as the world's heaviest door. And inside of them is not green goo like you imagine. No, it's glass and ceramic. Nuclear material melted down combined with glass and ceramic and inert material such that the nuclear stuff stays cool and stays below critical. Despite a blue Easy. whale's worth of concrete, despite the known physics of shielding, the public still isn't comfortable with these casks. The San Onofre nuclear generating station but found this out. What's interesting to me is that <laughs> why? If we know the science to be solid and we understand the science, why is it that people aren't okay with this? If we know that this is 100% safe, nothing bad can happen, why is it that people still go, uh, but no? Makes me think about Fallout 4 and how everything was powered by nuclear fusion energy from ovens to cars to trains, etc., etc. It has to be propaganda, but why? 
Why would there be such a push against nuclear power if the whole world wants green energy? When they started transferring high-level waste to above-ground casks near a beach, and the people there are still protesting that, imagining that this will be a problem for millennia. However, what they may not realize is that the vast Lobbyist majority, dollars, over 95% of all nuclear sure. waste, has a short enough half-life that it can decay on site to the point of harmlessness in the lifetime of a power plant. Some longer-lived materials will have to be stored away forever, of course, but most of it will decay in the lifetime of a plant to inert rock and glass. At that point, okay. standing next to one of these gargantuan nuclear coffins will literally be less harmful than taking a cross-country flight. Contrast this with fossil fuels again. Coal plants, for example, are the single largest source of mercury pollution on Earth. And neurotoxic metals like this mm -hmm. will never, I mean, ever... So the one thing I don't like about this video is how he keeps comparing nuclear waste to fossil fuels. And I feel like the vast majority of people that is against nuclear waste... Uh, Zig Zig, I'll talk about that in a second. I think most people that would be against nuclear are also against coal, right? I, I, I don't think it's like, uh, you know, people... I, I don't think there's many people that is for coal, like I said at the beginning of the video. I think most people are against coal, we just don't really agree on what the future could be. So I, I don't like the fact that he keeps referring back to like coal power plants and like repairing it or comparing it to coal power plants because yeah, we know coal is fucking horrible. Like you don't have to keep convincing us of it. Just show us why nuclear isn't the issue. Um, that's really all that matters. Six six, by the way, thanks for the forty five bits. Did really appreciate that. Um, to be fair though. I feel like the stakes for nuclear power plants are so high that because buildings collapse because of shortcuts, phones explode because of shortcuts. I don't think there's many people that will take shortcuts when it comes to building a nuclear power plant. One of the reasons my country isn't attempting to build nuclear power plants in order to fix uh, the power issue is exactly that. Nuclear power plant, to build a nuclear power plant will take over a decade. And my country doesn't have a decade. It doesn't have that long uh, to actually get it built. So, because you can't take shortcuts with a nuclear power plant. That thing has to be built to spec every single step of the way. Um, Daya Burst, I get that. I get that. I just feel like it's already like well established. We know that coal is fucking terrible. Uh, we have tool to compare its death by energy units produced, and coal is horrible. Oh yeah, coal is fucking terrible. Lose their toxicity ever. They will always be a problem, and today they're not even contained. Administrator, your request for the new Lamborghini Aventador has been denied by Big Uranium. Oh, come on, how many sensible facts do I have to shill for a sick Lambi? When properly stored and managed, Easy. nuclear waste is just so much easier to deal with than anything that comes out of fossil fuel use and production. But what about in between nuclear waste production and storage? Couldn't some accident happen when moving nuclear waste around? That's a good question, Aria. I want to show you something. These are nuclear waste transport casks. These are what we use to put nuclear waste in and move it from site A to site B or what have you. Now, for all intents and purposes, these are indestructible. Like, Hulk level, Infinity Gauntlet level, indestructible. Watch this for a second. Yeah. You can throw a runaway train Dude, it's a fucking one of these train things, hit again. Nothing happens. In the millions and millions of miles these things have traveled Jesus. across the globe for decades, there have been zero recorded accidents where one cracks open and stuff leaks out. There's Jesus. nothing to leak. Remember, this is not green glowing goo. This is concrete <laughs> Holy and steel crap, and bro. glass and ceramic. And because of that, and because these things are so indestructible, it's very unlikely any of this is ever going to get weaponized like people are worried about. That's just... Yeah, but weaponization can also be solved just by moving to fucking thorium, right? Uh, the, the problem right now with nuclear 
waste or nuclear being weaponized is that we're using cobalt. But if you if you use thorium, uh, I'm not exactly sure why, but I do know it it's it's almost impossible to weaponize thorium nuclear. Uh, it, it, the it's because you need to put something into the thorium in order for it to become radioactive. So you can't, it's not just, it's not radioactive by itself. There's nothing compared to my grandma throwing a, a chunkle at me. What the hell's a chunkla, Niara? I was at a nuclear power station once. The noise in the turbine hall was unbelievable. What do you mean with unbelievable, CDJ? Why do voters in California keep voting down desalination plants when they have been in a drought for decades? People are stupid about their own backyard true not how these materials are going to work what people should be worried about something like a rogue piece of medical equipment somewhere as unfortunately the entire city of goiona brazil found out a few decades ago when properly stored and managed nuclear waste might in fact be the safest waste there is and really Aureus? Is holy shit the ultimate solution for all of this stuff that nuclear scientists and engineers have known about for decades. So with that, it's time to go underground. Oh, my thighs. The international scientific consensus is that the best option for long-term storage of high-level nuclear waste is deep geological disposal. It okay. sounds simple, and that's because it is. You dig a big hole that goes really far underground, you put the already safe dry casks in there. You dig the hole so deep that it's below anything that's a water table, geologically active, or a biosphere. It's as isolated as you can get from humanity <laughs> without literally throwing these things into space, which you can't do. And we know that this deep disposal would work. Why couldn't you why couldn't you throw it into space? Just aim it at the sun and fucking go, bro. Like that would take care of almost all of our issues. Just aim it at the sun and fucking pop it off. It'll go forever because there's nothing that's going to stop it. At some point, the sun's gravity is going to latch onto it and just pull it in anyways. And once it hits the sun, it's going fucking bye-bye, right? There's, the sun is just going to incinerate whatever the fuck is inside of it. You could probably do that, I think. <laughs> yeah, the sun is literally the most giga-chad giga-chad in the universe. Uh... Jungle is a flip flop shoe. Ah, okay. Because yeah, but billions of fuck cost on me. We're not we're not being rational and reasonable here. We're just talking about things that could really work. Uh, it's efficient way to dispose of radioactive material. Just drop it on someone's head that you don't like. Easy, or is? Uh, how much would it cost to launch it? Well, I think it depends, right? Right now, probably a lot, but we could fuck, we, we could fucking do it eventually, right? Years ago, nature already tried it. About two billion years ago, in what is now Gabon, Africa, a rich natural uranium deposit, moderated by intruding groundwater, kicked off a series of modestly powerful nuclear reactions. A natural nuclear reactor right in the ground. Wait, These what? reactions generated energy and heat for hundreds of thousands of years. And I'm telling you this little geological factoid because in all that time, with all of the movement of the underlying geology, with all of the erosion, with zero protection, zero storage, the waste from this natural reactor, which was in contact with groundwater, moved less than 30 feet away from the site. Even without decades of study backing it up, even without Easy. a metric buttload of specialized concrete shielding, this natural experiment worked, and it's good evidence that deep disposal is relatively safe. If this is such a good solution, why aren't we doing it? Well, why don't we ask the experts? I thought you were an expert. Oh, no. No, no, I'm just an expert at this. To make the sure I got the facts dude. in this program right, I spoke with the scientists and engineers over at Deep Isolation, the world's first private company to make advancements in a very promising twist on deep geological disposal. Now, instead of wanting Easy, to use into the core. giant mines underground that are 18 feet wide and need people and heavy machinery and you have to move casks around with humans, instead of that, they want to use borehole technology that the oil and gas industry already has. Instead of those giant mines, you just drill 18 inch diameter holes, a thousand feet or more into the ground. 
you drill it at an angle or horizontal or vertical, but you drill it all the way below aquifers, below anything that's geologically active, below more rock than is in a generic disaster film. Into right. these holes, you put nuclear casts, you stack them or you line them up, you fill the entire thing with concrete, you Thank seal you, CDJ. it, yeah. you forget about it. The great thing about this idea is that you can do this all on site at a nuclear power plant. Deep Isolation estimates that it would take just 20 of these size holes, you can find the space somewhere for that, to contain an entire nuclear power plant's lifetime's worth of nuclear waste, which means no single large repository somewhere, no single national this could site be nice. where taxpayers would have to It pay does for remind it me of Shia LaBeouf, yeah. Not accepting it is exactly why a project like the Yucca Mountain Repository died. According to Deep Isolation, Geologic disposal is robust enough to survive earthquakes, ruptured canisters, and broken seals. This is simply a benefit of just being so deep underground. Funding exists yeah, right not? now to try something like this, and deep isolation has done its own polling to suggest that most of you would be much more comfortable knowing that a million year solution like this was up and running. Look, I'm partially making this video because yes, I am pro-nuclear power, but I'm mainly making it because this is a perceived, imagined problem that has an easy solution yeah. that's staring us right in the face. We have the funding. We have proven technologies. We Why, have old scientific consensus. The thing that's holding us back from storing all the nuclear waste in the world right now is you. Public acceptance. Whether yeah. or not we store- It's you. It's you fucking assholes that, that's holding the world back. Why are you guys so intent on holding us back? Like, we could already be living in the future if it wasn't for you close-minded fucks that keep going, nope, nope, we don't want that. We don't want that. Screw you assholes. Like, all of you. I know you, I, I know you are. Y you guys who, who basically want to go back to the fucking Stone Age because it was better. Than, than what we have now. It's all because of you. Here we go, one of the large. But why, old bother? Why, why was that happening? Neutron emitter for for forty reactors and like a pallet of plutonium two thirty nine as the source. We are self sustained with waterfall energy, oil production, and I think nuclear bad. Or waste in a in more bad, safe dude. and manageable way. Whether or not we do that and then expand nuclear power and then use nuclear power to help fight climate change, that. It's all up to you. I believe I've given you an accurate portrayal of this landscape. Whether or not it changes your mind, I did all I could as your resident science boy. Until next time, I gotta go fuel up my Lamborghini Honda Civic. You heard that. Now exit right. the facility. Yeah, I know it's a $250,000 car. Do you know how hoarse my voice is from fact spewing? Oh. Thank you so much to the very nerdy staff at the facility for their direct and substantial support in the creation of this here video. Today, I want to recognize everyone who likes the video. It's an experiment and subscribes to the channel. If you want to continue on this conversation, if you want to drape on a silky white lab coat, which we're actually making, if you want to join the Discord, see videos early, go to patreon.com slash Kyle Hill and join the facility today. And as you can see, there's so many of you. Jeez, know, there, he does have a fuck ton of patrons. Sounding in my sultry, sick voice. But uh, I bet a lot of you are wondering about space disposal. Yeah. It's just a matter of fact that it's way too dangerous and it's going gonna, it's gonna to cost too much money. Launching a rocket is hard. It might blow up. If it blows up with nuclear material in it, that's even worse. You don't want to do that. Thanks again. Dude, I don't believe you. I think we could do that. Launch it into space. Just get someone to kick it really hard, bro. Like, easy. Just get, like, those those strongmen. Make that one of the competitions. See how far you can kick the fucking nuclear waste disposal shit. Um, but the population is in decline and will be half in 2100. 2100, we have other issues to think about as production chains, etc. He got a super spicy take on Saudi Arabia incident. Ooh, w wait, too bored? Is there more drama around Asmongold? 